Yep. Any questions from the ladies? Yes. Hello, my name is Rita. I'm an international student from Morocco. I have, in fact, two questions. Uh, the first one, you mentioned the family banks. You said that they failed like the classic uh, ones. Can you please explain why they failed? And the second question is, how does management information system participate in the development of the banking sector in the Gulf countries, such as Qatar? See. I had the privilege of practicing both conventional bank as well as Islamic finance, Sharia-based finance. Uh, we used to run Doha Bank and Doha Islamic as integral part of overall uh, Doha Bank uh, branch network. Of course, it had a separate Sharia board and uh, Islamic banking is all about, as I said, equity financing as against debt, debt financing. It's all driven by contractual obligations, what you call wakala. The, these are principle-centered uh, partnerships where transparency is supposed to be uh, well uh, depicted. Again, the uh, profitability or pricing margins is all well understood between the partners and uh, there was opportunity to bring in a profit as against interest in every single deal. But it is, it is in an embryonic stage, it's only 30 years old, there, is, there, is, there are no sufficient knowledge base, there is no standardization in the uh, Islamic banking as on date, so it's struggling a bit. When it comes to uh, technology support, again, it's evolving. The, even within the Arab world, there is nothing as pan-Arab Sharia. In Morocco, you may have a different set of Sharia. In within the Gulf itself, uh, or Malaysian standards are different from uh, Saudi Arabian standards. So the, we need to set an universal a framework for Sharia-based finance. That needs to be uh, the first priority. When it comes to uh, Long-term financing, it's an opportunity uh, when it comes to uh, the uh, is this contractual uh, uh, infrastructure creation or uh, is this now the, uh, the contract financing. There's a good model, can, uh, could be Sharia-based finance. But again, since there is no standardization, it is not working out to be the right model. So what we need to do, it's already evolving. Islamic financial, I mean, uh, finance board from Malaysia is now trying to standardize as much as possible a universal standard they're trying to bring in. So that when you, when you do a transaction, it's all asset backed. And again, when you issue a debt paper like Sukuk, it's all standardized, securitized in full scale. That's the need of the hour. When it comes to the second question, uh, the management information system. Let me understand. Uh, you ask a question for a, a management information for Islamic finance or in general? See, the, the management information systems in the Gulf states are well governed, I should say, because you have uh, expected quality professionals managing the uh, banking finance, banking operations. They're all technically, they're all technocrats. They know the, uh, the subject and again, the investments in terms of technology is also very liberal. And uh, conceptually, the interpretation of the information is very scientific. We practice, uh, if it is the finance, financial institutions of Basel II, last six, seven years. Banks are well capitalized. The informations uh, which are disseminated are all are very authentic. They're all uh, accurate, reasonably accurate, I should say. The management information is second to none. Most of the global uh, technology supports are all available in the Gulf states. 
So if you want to, I, I daily see the dashboard on a daily basis, the mission critical ratios I look at, lending ratio or liquidity ratio to run an enterprise or profitability of deals. So we're all fairly well uh, governed in terms of information. Yes, please, Mr. Leslie. Just real quickly, if you can see a year, Current regime about a year, what, what's your prognostication for Iraq? Do you think it will become a viable democracy, which would be wonderful, or do you think it will deteriorate from, from this current situation? See, the Arab Spring is, is a new phenomenon. It, it evolved like a volcano last year. Now, it's people power which drives the arrest. And uh, women participation in the governance, and again, now human rights, it all coming up. The road is bumpy, as I said, but it's going to happen. I mean, Iraq cannot go back in terms of, you know, political frame other than being a democratic inst institution. There are divisions in real order. That's, that's part and parcel of the frame. Even advanced economies, even developed democracies are going through stagnations, you know it. So the road is bumpy, but eventually they will get there. So we see uh, a s social stability in place like Qatar. You have human rights. We have women participation in the governance. Our Highness Sheikha Musa is running the enterprise for education. So the, the, the chase is on. It, the, it is irreversible. World over, you will find I think the, the, even the crisis, as I said, it's people empowerment, human dignity is what is reflection today. The crisis is a positive reflection in a way because it's socially uh, driving the change. That's why you have consumer protection. That's why you have investment caps. That's why you have uh, the rate cap. The, the model is evolving to be uh, the, uh, the uh, ch uh, social change. So Iraq cannot go back in its... Direction. Yes. Yes. Please. Speak up. See, the, today, uh, this century again belongs to the United States. I don't have any other theory. In terms of uh, political governance or defense or military, the U.S. is supreme. In terms of economic empowerment, there's no second line. There's a long way to catch up. Even China is emerging. Again, politics and economics have to converge in real order the rest of the world. India is the biggest democracy, but it is fragmented in multiple forms. So U.S. will continue to be the strong leader in the, in the current world, this century again. Now, what sort of alignment they need, what they're trying to do around the world in terms of political governance, leadership, is good. They're trying to bring the change, social respects and freedom. And that's a, a, that's a great vision for human dignity. And the Gulf states are embedded with this partnership. They can't reverse. You have huge affluence, but you need to make sure grass welfare to the mass. And yes, is the right partner. Look at the scale of the operations. What we are witnessing as temporary disturbance in the United States cannot realign the partnership for Gulf states with someone else. There's no second strong force who can showcase the founding principles of freedom or constitutional alignment, you know, can give enduring values to Gulf states other than the United States. These are very rich countries, and they are ensuring their individual sovereignty, as I said, through the United States. There was a social unrest in Bahrain last year. The naval base of U.S. is in Bahrain. There was social unrest in, in Oman because of the reflection in Tunisia or Egypt. And again, 
when it comes to uh, political governance, U.S. played a big role. They, they moderated the frame and making sure that there is an absolute uh, social order comes in. And that's why they kept a military base uh, and uh, in a naval or army in the Gulf states. And it's, it's a long-term value for uh, the overall uh, stability of the region. That will prevail. That will continue to prevail. See, the U.S. Constitution is well-founded. And it's, 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 it's a new world order, in a way. Let's not get, you know, get defeated by a few debt issues. That's only temporary. Yes, can, uh, you know, research in the coming days with this intellectual property, which is with this copyright, with this defense, with this so many, uh, you know, strength. Yes, has got its, in its framework. That will prevail the long term, globally. Regionally. Yes. Mr. Sitaraman, I thought I detected uh, a theme of American exceptionalism, uh, <laughs> confidence and optimism about America's future. Um, you've given us an extraordinary tour of the world with great insights. I'm sure I'm not the only one here that is thinking, boy, would it be possible for him to help advise our endowment investments? <laughs> <laughs> this has been an extraordinary opportunity for our students, our faculty, all of our invited guests this evening. We hope that this is the first of many visits you'll pay to Chestertown and Washington College. I cannot think of a better speaker or a better topic to inaugurate the very first of our speaker series in leadership and we're very grateful for you this evening. Please join me in thanking Mr. Sitaraman.